Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5, Integration by Inspection. Now we covered this slightly in the video on integrating exponentials and trig functions and 1 over x, but let's just recap with these examples here. If we wanted to integrate e to the 3x with respect to x, then do you remember that we just divide by the number in front of the x, so we'd end up with a third e to the 3x. Now let's think about what exactly is happening here. We effectively want to use the chain rule backwards. Remember that the chain rule was a way of differentiating a function within a function. So if I was to say, consider e to the 3x, and let's just differentiate this and see what happens. Well, the chain rule basically says we want to do the outer function differentiated, so like the e to the something or the e to the blah, and then we times by the inner function differentiated. And you need to watch my chain rule video first if you haven't already. So the outer function e to the blah differentiates to e to the blah. And then this inner function of 3x, if we differentiate it, we get 3 and we times by that 3. Now, if this differentiates to give this, then this will integrate to give this expression. So integrating 3e e to the 3x will give e to the 3x, but we're not integrating 3e e to the 3x, we're integrating e to the 3x. So we need something a third as big, and therefore we end up with a result when we integrate a third as big. So it will be a third e to the 3x, as we can see here. And this method here I call consider and scale. It's basically where you consider some expression which might differentiate this and then we have to scale accordingly because we might have some different number on the front. If we apply it to these other ones here, if we want to integrate 3, 2x plus 5 to the power of 6. Well, the quick way of doing this is to add 1 to the power, as we usually do when we're integrating polynomial terms. Then we divide by the power, wouldn't we? We divide by the 7, but we also have to divide by that number in front of the x. So we divide by the 2 as well. If we divide by 2 and by 7, we're dividing by 14. So it'd be 3 14ths of this plus c. But if we were doing it the long-winded way, and that will help us when we come to these hard examples, let's try something that might differentiate to this expression here. Now, it might be sensible to try this with one power higher, because that's often what happens. We have something to a power, the power goes up by one. Now, let's differentiate that and then scale accordingly. Well, using the chain rule, the outer function differentiated, blah to the seven, differentiates to 7 blah to the 6. And then we times by the inner function differentiated, that's just 2, so that is equal to 14 2x plus 5 to the power of 6. So therefore, if that differentiates to that, this integrates to that, but we're not integrating this, we're integrating this with a 3 on the front instead. Now, how do we get this 14 to become 3? Well, we can divide that by 14 and times by 3. So therefore, I would also have to divide this by 14 and times by 3, i.e. we have 3 14ths of it. These other simpler ones, we want to integrate 3 cos 4x. Now we know that the cos of 4x would integrate to sine of 4x, because cos integrates to sine, but because of that 4 in front of the x, we have to divide by that 4, so that becomes 3 quarters. Let's not forget the plus c. Then question 4. We want to integrate a third sine of 2x. Well, we know that sine integrates to minus cos. So we have cos of 2x, and it's going to be minus. But again, we have to divide by this number in front of the x. We divide by the 2, so the third becomes a 6. So it's a minus a 6 cos 2x plus c. And finally, with these simpler ones, we got the integral of 1 over 3x plus 2. Now we know if we integrate 1 over x, that becomes ln of the modulus of x. So it's going to similarly become ln of the modulus of 3x plus 2. But we've got this number in front of the x, the 3, so we have to divide by that 3 to give that. Now for these harder ones, that same technique does not work. And the reason is, is because this inner function here is not linear. It's not something x plus something, as we had with all of these. We can see that inner function was linear, it was just 3x. This linear function is linear. 
that linear function of 4x is linear, that inner function of 3x plus 2 is linear, etc. But x squared plus 1 is clearly not linear. But we can still use this kind of consider and scale method. So let's try that. So question 1. So let's consider something which might differentiate to give this. Now notice that, that inner function, when we differentiate it, that would give 2x, which we have on the front. And that suggests that we should try y equals this thing here with a power 1 higher. So we try that and see what happens using the chain rule. We're hoping that this will differentiate to this, and therefore this would integrate to something like this. So when we differentiate, well, the outer function, blah to the 6, differentiates to 6, blah to the 5. And then we times by the inner function differentiated, 2x, so that gives us 12x x squared plus 1 to the 5. And we can see that this does pretty much match this, except the number on the front is different. So this differentiates to this, this integrates to this, but I don't want this when I'm integrating, I want something 6 times as small. And therefore, if this is 6 times as small, it has a 2 in the front, I'll end up with something 6 times as small after I integrate it. So therefore, this is equal to a sixth of that plus c. Now question 2, something very similar, we're integrating x, x squared plus 5 to the power of 3. Let's use the same principle, we're going to try y equals and this with a power 1 higher, so x squared plus 5 to the power of 4. Now when I differentiate it by the chain rule, I get 4 blah to the 3, and then I times by the blah differentiated the 2x, and that gives us 8x, x squared plus 5 to the 3. So if that differentiates to this, this integrates to this, but we're not integrating this, we're integrating something which is an eighth as big. So if I start with something an eighth as big, I'll end up with something an eighth as big when I integrate. So this is therefore equal to an eighth of that. Now question three, we've got something that's still similar, and the reason it's similar is because we've got sine of x to some power, just like we've got this expression to some power, and notice when we differentiate sine of x, it becomes cos of x. Just like when you differentiate x squared plus 5, it almost gave us x, except for a scale factor off. So let's write this, and instead of sine cubed of x, I'm going to write it what it actually means, which is sine of x cubed. Now, just as before, because we have something to a power and this inner thing differentiates to that, I'm going to try this thing here, but with a power 1 higher. Let's see what happens when I differentiate. So that's y equals that. So dy of dx, by the chain rule, would be 4 blah to the 3. And then I times by the inner function differentiated, which is cos of x. And we can see that that matches this, except for I've got something four times as big. So if that integrates to that, I want something four times smaller so that it matches this, and therefore I end up with something four times smaller when I integrate. So therefore, this integrates to a quarter sine of x to the power of four, or I can just write that as sine to the four of x plus c. Question four. Now, believe it or not, this is the same form as these first two questions here. All I need to do is just to bring this up to the top. And when I do so, that negates the power. So this can be rewritten as x, x squared plus 5 to the minus 3, because I brought this up to the top. So we do as we did before. We try or consider y equals this with a power 1 higher. So x squared plus 5 to the minus 2. And then when I differentiate that using the chain rule, that gives you, well, blah to the minus 2 becomes minus 2 blah to the minus 3. And we times by the inner function differentiated, i.e. 2x, and that simplifies to minus 4x, x squared plus 5 to the minus 3. So we know that this integrates to this, but we've got something minus 4 times as small. So if I make this minus 4 times as small, it integrates to something minus 4 times as small. So therefore, this is equal to minus a quarter x squared plus 5 to the minus 2, all plus c. And we could write that without a negative power if we wanted to. Now, this next one is very much different. So we want to integrate 2x over x squared plus 1 dx. 
Now we might think we can just bring this up to the top and have x squared plus 1 to the minus 1, but the problem with that is that when I add 1 to that power, I'd have 0, then you can't kind of divide by 0. So that's going to cause a problem. It's just like when you integrate 1 over x, you wouldn't try and rewrite as x to the minus 1 because we encounter problems when we add 1 to that power and divide by that new power of 0. But notice in this fraction, the denominator differentiates to the numerator. And whenever that happens, we try or consider y equals ln of the denominator like this. And let's see what happens. So when we differentiate, well, ln of blah, the outer function, differentiates to 1 over blah. And then we times by the inner function differentiated, well, the x squared plus 1 differentiates to 2x. And when we times by 2x, that ends up on the top. Ah, well, that matches this exactly. So if that differentiates to that, that integrates to that. And therefore, we know this is therefore ln of the modulus of x squared plus 1 plus c. Remember, when we integrate 1 over x, we get ln of the modulus of x. So similarly, we have to have this modulus here. And basically, we can use this particular trick whenever we're integrating anything of the form f prime of x over f of x, i.e. where the bottom differentiates the top, and that will give us ln of whatever that denominator is, plus c. So that's a kind of standard result. Whereas the form of these first ones is where we have something to a power, and the derivative of that inner thing is on the front there. So let's do number six now. We've got the integral of cos of x over sine of x plus two. Now we can instantly see that the bottom differentiates to the top and therefore it's just going to be ln of that bottom. So sine of x plus two plus c. Now what about seven? The integral of x squared over x cubed minus one. Well, let's try and do this one in our heads. Well, we can see that the bottom differentiates to 3x squared. But we don't have 3x squared, we have x squared at the top. So we want something a third as big. And therefore, we'd start with this, ln of x cubed minus 1. But because this gives 3x squared over x cubed minus 1, we have to do a third of it to get rid of that 3 we would otherwise get at the top. And we still got the plus c. And what about 8? Now, this is a different form altogether again we got x e to the x squared. But it's still slightly similar to these first things here, where we have the derivative of that inner function on the front. Here again, the derivative of x squared would be 2x, which we sort of have at the front, except for scale factor off. Now let's consider what happens if we were to differentiate e to the x squared. Well, when we do so, well, e to the blah, the outer function, differentiates to e to the blah. And then when we times by the blah differentiated, that would be 2x. So that integrates to this, but we got something half as big, and therefore it integrates to something half as big. So we'd in fact have half e to the x squared plus c. And these final few, we've got the integral of sine x e to the cos x. Again, notice that the inner function here differentiates almost to this thing on the front. So let's try y equals e to the cos of x without this thing on the front, like before. And then when we differentiate, well, e to the blah becomes e to the blah. And then we times by the inner function differentiated, cos of x differentiates to minus sine of x. Now, this exactly matches this, but we've got a minus on the front. So if this integrates to this, then if we negate this so it exactly matches this, then we also have to negate the result. So therefore, this is equal to minus e to the cos x plus c. Now, for the very final one, this is quite interesting. We've got sec to the 4 of x tan x dx. Now, this looks similar to question 3, where we have sine cubed of x, and when we differentiate sine of x, it became cos of x, and we sort of had sine to the 4 of x and adjusted at the end based on the scale factor. Now, if we were to try y equals set to the 5 of x, because we might think we can just increase this power by 1, let's see what happens. Well, let's first write this as sec of x to the 5. That's what we do when we want to differentiate a trig function to a power. Now, when we differentiate it, the outer function, blah to the 5, becomes 5 blah to the 4. 
So we put the power of 4 here. Now when we differentiate the inner function, sec of x differentiates to sec x tan x. So in fact, we have 5 and then sec to the 4 of x times sec of x would be sec to the 5 of x tan of x. Now this is a problem because this does not match the form of this because here we have a power of 5. And that's because when we differentiated sec to the 5 of x, Okay, the power of sec went down, but we got this extra sec because when we differentiate sec of x, we get sec x tan x. We have that extra sec there. So therefore, when we're integrating this, we instead consider something with the same power of that sec there. So let's try y is equal to sec to the 4 of x or sec of x to the 4. Now when we differentiate that, we're going to get 4 sec of x cubed, so put the cubed here, and then we times by the sec of x differentiated, which is sec of x tan of x, and that can be simplified to 4 sec to the 4 of x tan of x. Now this does exactly match this now here, except for we don't want that 4 in the front. So if this integrates to this, we want a quarter of this, so it matches that, which will then become a quarter of that. So this therefore integrates to a quarter of sec to the 4 of x plus c. So the bottom line there is that if you have uh, sine of x or cos of x to a power with the opposite, either the cos or the sine on the front, we try sine with one power higher. So in this case, we tried sine to the 4 of x. But if you have sec to a power with a tan attached, then you try sec but with the same power there. So sec to the 4 of x in this case is what we considered.